Hi, I'm Kevin Beach from TCI Engineering. I'm in the tech department here. Today we're going to go over the assembly of the 55 to 9 Chevrolet grounded chassis. And the assembly of all the components is virtually identical on the 48 through 56 Ford pickup. So your chassis will arrive, as you see it here, bare steel. It's fully plumbed with all the brake lines and air lines. You'll get two pallets of components, the larger being the chassis. The smaller will be the rear end, your rack, sway bar, your brakes, calipers, spindles, etc. Be sure to unpack all the boxes and check everything out. Commonly, the front sway bar is in the box with the rack and pinion. And you can see we've got quite a few of the pieces laid out here for you on the grounded chassis with the airbag system. All right, so we're going to start with putting the lower control arms on. So the first thing is to make sure we've got the right arm on the right side. So the straight arm here is the forward. And you can also tell by the sway bar mount. This is the left front arm. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that bushings are greased. So you're going to push these center sleeves out and apply your urethane grease, making sure all these grooves are completely filled. So these are the lower control arm bushings. And you can see the grooves in there. So once they're slid into the arm, you're going to want to make sure that all these grooves are full of grease. This is the upper control arm bushing, a single piece, longer. Shoulder goes on the outside edge. Make sure they're fully greased and then put the center sleeves back in and we'll move on. All right, so now that we've got the bushings greased, let's take the washers off. We're going to leave one under the head of the nut. The other three, we're going to go on the other each side of each bushing. So let's take that off. We're going to start the second washer here, and we're going to set the arm into place. And once we've got the bolt started, we can put our third washer in right here and hold it in place. Align the arm. There you go. And here's our fourth washer and the lock nut. And we're going to leave this hand tight for now. Okay. All right. All right. So next up, we're going to put our airbag in place. This is the hardware pack for putting the airbag in. This is the air fitting you're going to need. So the first thing we're going to do is get the hardware out. We're not going to need the bump stops at this point in the process. This is the bolt that's going to put the hat in along with this washer. All right. So let's get the airbag ready for installation. We're going to put the fitting in. Make sure you put some sort of thread sealer onto the fitting and screw it into the bag. Well, this fitting is going to face the rear of the vehicle, so we're going to have to turn it so we can get our airline connected. So go ahead and bring it around. Right about there should do. Alright, so we've got the fitting in, we've got the orientation correct. Now, there is a left and a right to your spring cup here. The easy way to identify this is the slot's going to face the rear and the angle of the cup is going to be downhill toward the frame. If you put it in there backward, you can see how the angle isn't going to work. So that's how you identify left and right. Let's go ahead and set this in place. And then we've got two flat washers and two lock washers. They're going to go right down here. Go ahead and put these in place and tighten them up. Okay, so here we have the airbag assembly ready for installation. We're going to go ahead and put it up into the upper spring hat here. Now here's your bolt. Notice the cup to washer. It goes in through here. And go ahead and tighten that into place. So for now we're just going to get this bolt started actually because we're going to need to make sure we can rotate this to align it to the lower control arm. Okay, so we've got the bag up into the spring hat. We're going to bring the lower arm up. You can see we've got multiple places to mount the bag. 
right here on the edge of these slotted holes is the preferred place. Go ahead and lock the bag in. There it goes. There we are. And you've got the same hardware underneath as you used on top. Flat washer and a nylock. Okay, so just tightened up the lock nuts under the airbag. Now we're going to come up top, tighten the bolt we put in earlier. All right, let's put the bump stop in. Here we go. All right, we're going to put the lower shock mount in. Slide it through the arm, put the nut on and tighten it up. Okay, so let's put our shock in place. Start it on the lower mount. You can just pivot it back and forth as you press it on. These are the washers with the cover to protect the stainless. Go ahead and start that nut in place. We'll come up here to the top. Moving on to the upper bolt. And tighten up top and bottom, and we're all set with the shock absorber. Okay, so now we're going to put the upper arms on. There is no left and right, they're the symmetrical. So we're going to take the hardware off, first of all, and get those out of the way. Just like we talked about on the lower control arms, you're going to want to make sure that these bushings are fully greased, and then we'll put it onto the chassis. Yep. Okay, so we use these washers right here for alignment for both caster and camber. And these holes are slotted for an additional caster adjustment. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten the upper control arm cross shafts and then go ahead and tighten these up. And you're all set. All right, so next up we're going to put our spindle assemblies with our calipers and rotors on. So the way we figure out which is which is the steering arm always faces forward, calipers on the back. Take our hardware, start it onto the bottom, and then bring the top into place. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this side by tightening both your ball joint nuts and putting the cotter pins in place. All right, now that the castle nuts are torqued, go ahead and put the uh, cotter pins in, bend the tabs over. At this point, it'd be a good time to grease the upper and lower ball joints. Okay, as always here at TCI, we use Moog components for the ball joints. We have a K772 upper and a K719 lower. On your brakes, calipers, and pads here, for your Chevy bolt pattern, this is a 82 to 87 Camaro rotor. It's got a 75 through 80 Ford Granada inner bearing and race. The brake calipers are 98, I'm sorry, 89 through 2003 Chevrolet S10. The brake pad number is, the plate number is D154. The Ford rotor is just a 75 through 80 Granada rotor with the bolt pattern. So here's the hardware package for the rack and pinion. Two large bolts, the spacers, washers, nuts, etc. Let's go ahead and put the rack on. Get it. So on the power rack and pinion, you can see the hardware we have with the spacers. Now if you've elected the manual steering, you will not have these spacers right here. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so the easiest way to tighten the rack, push the bolt back, the box end of the wrench will fit in the opening, set it on there, take your impact gun, ratchet, etc., and tighten it up. And that's all there is to putting the rack on. All right, so now we're going to center the rack and pinion so we don't have our steering wheel, steering column off center when we're putting our chassis together. So we'll start by turning the steering all the way to one side. And that's maxed out. What I like to do is use this casting on the rack right here because it's a nice fixed point. We're going to measure from here to the end of the tie rod. So that is 16 and one quarter. So make a note of that. Now we're going to turn the rack all the way back the other direction and take another measurement. Okay, that's fully stopped. And the, the rack boot may hold pressure on it. So you need to make sure you hold the wrench because if you let the wrench go, you see how the rack moves back. So hold it against the stop and take another measurement. And that is 11 inches. So make a note of that. So we had 16 and a quarter at full travel, 11 at full compression. That leaves us a five and a quarter. We divide that by two, that's two and five eighths. So we're gonna turn the steering shaft back until we come up with 13 and five eighths. There we go, 13 and 5 eighths. Now the rack is centered. All right, so next up is the sway bar. Here's all your components, your heim joints, the mounting blocks, the collars, all of your hardware to attach it to the A-arms. So let's go ahead and get this installed. All right, so as we're getting ready to put our sway bar in, take the hardware apart here, take this lock washer off, have just the A-N on the head of the bolt, put it back in the block. Now these are split bushings on these sway bars. So you're gonna open your bushing up, slide it around the bar and start it into the block. This is a very tight fit. So make sure you put urethane grease on this bushing, both inside and out. It'll help with the installation. We're just gonna get this one seated most of the way for now and put the sway bar in. So we've got the block on both sides. We're gonna wrap the sway bar, wrap the bushing around both sides. And just start that one loosely because we're going to need to be able to adjust these blocks to center the sway bar. <clears throat> and then we'll finish pushing the bushings in and centering up the sway bar. Okay, so putting these bushings in and getting this bar assembled and installed can be a little bit of a trick to seat both bushings and get the blocks aligned. So what we do is we leave one side a little bit out. You can take a one inch wrench, it'll go right over the bar, push in on the bushing and just rotate the bar up and down. And as you're doing that, that bushing will walk right in and seat. It's easier than trying to seat everything, get your centering and try to do that before you put it on the chassis. Okay, so we're going to put our lock collars on. That's going to keep the sway bar centered in the chassis. There's the set screw. Just slide it on the bar, up and around the corner. Bring it up against the bushing. All right, we're going to start by connecting the heim joint to the sway bar here. So here's the hardware. You've got your heim joint link, long bolt, short bolt, spacer, lock nut, etc. The shorter bolt is the one that goes into the sway bar. The longer is going to go through the heim joint through the lower control arm and we'll go ahead and make those connections so you can see which part goes where. The heim joint is going to hang in this fashion with the female end up. We don't want moisture going up into these threads. So 
So we're going to put the bolt through the heim joint, put the spacer on, put this up into the control arm. We have your AN washer and the nut that are going to go on the back side here. And then we'll tighten that up. All right, we'll put our second heim joint link on. We've got our longer bolt, our spacer. I'm going to go ahead and line this up. And you can see this is lining up perfectly with this hole. If it doesn't, just simply twist the heim and adjust the height so that the sway bar is neutral. Okay, so now we got our heim links connected. We want to make sure that the angle matches left and right. The sway bar on this one is already very well centered. So we're going to call that good and then we're going to move to the back and put the lock rings on that are going to hold the sway bar in place so it doesn't move back and forth while you're driving. You don't have to crank these down. This is just an aluminum collar, so just snug is all you need. We'll go to the other side and finish up. And the last step on the sway bar, now that everything else is in place, is we're going to lock the jam nuts in. And that's all it takes. If you want to, you can go ahead and center that back up. All right, so next up, we're going to connect the rack and pinion to the steering arms. We've got a couple of steps here. So we've got your tie rod end, and depending on the supplier, you may get one with a jam nut or a lock nut like this, or it could have a castle nut with a cotter pin. So you're going to want to put the grease zerk into the tie rod end. And then these will also come with a jam nut but there's already one on the rack. Either one works fine. Pick whichever one you like and go ahead and put the tie rod end onto the arm. So you can get this started and then before we install it into the arm we're going to want to check and see where the toe is on our front end so this will be easily rollable as we're getting ready to finish the build and go to the alignment shop. So we're going to measure from the frame rail to the back face of the rotor right at about 10 and 9 sixteenths on that side. And then 10 and 5 eighths on this side. So I'm a 16th towed in, which is actually where we want to be. I'm going to leave it there and go ahead and adjust the tie rod in and put it in. There we go. So the left side's done. Last step here is we're going to put our right tie rod end in. And as we said before, once you're done with the left, you're just going to duplicate everything on the right. So connecting the lower control arms, same on both sides. Obviously the ball joints are the same on both sides. Upper control arm, same on both sides. The uh, shock mount and your bump stop. So double check everything and make sure you're good to go. Thanks for watching part one of our chassis assembly video. See part two for the rear suspension and the pedal assembly. Wherever you are in your assembly process on your project, we're here for you at Tech Support. You can always email us at techsupport at totalcostevolve.com or call us on our Tech Support phone line.